Hello, this is Kikoto Mani from Team Get Rec Robotics, and this is my event report for Maker Battle held by Makerspace Connecticut. This would be a double elimination tournament for ant weights, and I'll be entering my brand new one pound bot named Esper. Esper is a four wheel drive vertical spinner, but what makes it unique is that its spinning weapon is on a four bar mechanism that allows it to move its weapons in ways other verts can't. Specifically, Esper can use the four bar to punch its opponent with the spinner, similar to bots like Tantra from Ballabots. I didn't start building Esper until a few days before the event, so the bot was very rust and had a few issues, but I was still just happy to get it built and functional in time for the event. It's also worth noting that Esper would be my first ever attempt at a vertical spinner, so it was definitely going to be a learning experience and I'd be stepping out of my comfort zone. My first fight would be against a drum spinner named Blitz. Uh, because his weapon is larger than mine, I was not confident going weapon to weapon, so my strategy for this fight would be to slow down his weapon first with the TPU fork, and then attempt to punch him once I get underneath him. With that out of the way, let's see if Esper can win his first ever fight. Three, two, one, fight! Robots, fight! Alright, here we go. Blitz coming straight across into Esper here. Esper from our friend Kokoto Mane from WPI. And Cole here from Sunny Robotics. This is Kokoto's first ever vertical spinner. He has never built a vert before, so I am super excited to see this cool new design out of him. Cole over here with a few different pieces of a few different robots that we've seen out of him this year put together. Oh, and he has taken apart the top of Esper here, which you can now hear his robot going into the floor. Wow. And that was a big hit there by Blitz. Esper is upside down. His wheels are spinning, but they are definitely not connecting on the floor. And that is a tap out. The winner of that fight is Blitz. And unfortunately, Blitz was able to get the best of Esper in that fight. Now, the first few exchanges actually went a lot better than I expected. Unfortunately, the pin that connects the servo arm to the four bar came loose and eventually fell out causing the entire weapon assembly to tip forwards and allowing the spinner to hit the ground. To make matters worse, eventually all of the screws holding the motor in place stripped out and the entire spinner came detached from the brackets entirely. After that, Blitz got one good hit that flipped me over. I've tested it and usually the bot is able to drive upside down with its back wheels, uh, but unfortunately with both the four bar and the weapon broken, they lifted those wheels off the ground just enough that the robot couldn't move and eventually Blitz just got the win by KO. Uh, since this format was double elimination, Esper would get another chance. And uh, there wasn't that much damage. All I really had to do to fix Esper was reattach the pin and put on a new weapon mode with new screws, and the bot was good as new. My next fight would be in the loser's bracket against Boisterous Exuberance, built by NHRL legend Tom Farkas, who's built fan favorite bots like Positively Hysterical and Revenge of Mouse Mouse. Now, Boisterous Exuberance is a two-wheel drive hammer bot, but what makes it really interesting is that its hammer is a toy squeaky hammer. Now, the bot may not look all that threatening, but unlike me, it won its first fight, and even though it lost its second fight, it was a really close match that showed just how durable the bot could be. Uh, Boisterous Exuberance body is almost entirely TPU, a flexible material that absorbs hits really well, so I was worried that I wouldn't be able to damage him and I could end up losing the match on control and aggression. My strategy for this match would be to start the fight with the arm raised to the highest position and try to attack the exposed servo that fires a hammer. Will this strategy work? Let's find out now. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robot, fight. All right, and four, five. Up to speed. And immediately kill the servo. Does that mean we're not going to hear any squeaking? Oh no, I feel so sad. All of a sudden. Oh, there we go. Thanks.
judges well that was a fun fight and i think esper really showed what its unique four bar design can do as i was planning i was able to immediately snipe the signal wire to his servo and kill his weapon instantly even though it was part of my plan i do feel a little bit bad at tom to get a chance to use the hammer at least once since it really is a fun weapon to watch after that the rest of the fight was just me trying to get in as many attacks as i could at one point, I started to attack the top panel of my opponent, and I think that's a good example of the four bar allowing me to attack in ways other vertical spinners can't. Later on, I start shaving sparks off his titanium wheels, which doesn't do that much real damage, but it just looks really cool. As I expected, I could not KO Boisterous Exuberance due to its amazing durability, and it went to the judges where I won the decision. And with that, Esper got its first ever win and will be moving on to the next round. Esper's third fight would be against Sonic, a bot built by Seth Safer. Seth is a popular YouTuber within the robot comic community who has built several interesting machines, and Sonic is no exception. Sonic is a two-wheel drive verb, but what makes it really interesting is its speed. Even though Sonic is an ant weight, it uses the same drive motors used in beetle weights. This was definitely going to be my toughest fight, but I had a strategy. I noticed from previous fights that Sonic's biggest weakness is that it's pretty unstable, and it tends to hit the floor with its weapon, causing it to fly out of control, and I believed I could exploit this. I also knew that Sonic was so fast that I would never be able to outdrive him, so at the beginning of the fight, instead of trying to box rush him, I would do the opposite. I would keep my back against the wall to ensure that we could only go face to face. Lastly, like with the previous fight, I would raise my floor bar to the position that would put the weapon out as far as possible in the hopes that I could outreach him and hit Sonic before Sonic could hit me. It's do, or, it's do or die time, and it's time for Esper to see what it can do against such an amazing machine. Let's get into that fight right now. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robot, fight. And with that KO loss, Esper has officially been eliminated from the tournament. However, I'm happy to say Esper fought hard till the end. I succeeded in getting the first hit like I wanted, which sent Sonic across the box. There are a couple more moments in the fight where I'm able to get Sonic's weapon to hit the floor and make the bot go out of control. Esper is honestly doing pretty well until, eventually, the weapon came off of one side of the bracket and like in the first fight, the weapon started to hit the floor, which caused the bot to flip itself over. 
Before I had the chance to self-right, Seth was able to take advantage and get the shot he needed to end the fight, unplugging both the drive and weapon ESCs and turning Esper off completely. I've been a fan of Seth and his bots for years and so I was really happy to put up such a close back and forth fight with him. Esper ends its run at 1 and 2. Esper may be out of the tournament, but it still has one more fight. Specifically, Esper would be fighting in a freeway exhibition rumble against a ring spinner named Spinner Rooney and a droopy style gyro walker named Mini Mako. Even though this match is just for fun, I still thought it would be a good test to see how Esper handles horizontal spinners. Uh, by the way, the stream footage for this fight wasn't that great, but the builder of Mini Mako was kind enough to give me his footage for the fight, which I really appreciate. With all that out of the way, let's get into the rumble. Was a fun rumble. I decided to go after Spinner Rooney first, and my TPU fork actually did a good job of absorbing the hits. Speaking of hits, at one point I was able to go weapon to weapon with him, and I actually popped Spinner Rooney into the air a little bit, which I was impressed by. But unfortunately, everything went wrong when Spinner Rooney hit Mini Mako, which in turn caused Mini Mako to crash into Esper, ripping off its back right wheel and flipping it over. I tried to use my weapon to self fry but that just caused me to crash into Spinner Rooney again, which in turn threw Esper through the air. Uh, I do get self righted eventually, but unfortunately the damage is already done. With a wheel missing and another side of drive down, all I can really do for the rest of the fight is just crab walk until the time is up. Funny enough, this fight had the most damage Esper took throughout the entire event. Obviously the wheel got cut up, but something I didn't initially notice was how the hit from Mini Mako actually shattered the N20 motor that was attached to that wheel. So that's pretty gnarly stuff. And that's it for Esper's first ever competition. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied how the bot did, considering how experimental this design was, and how much I rust getting it together, so I was just happy to see it work at all. There really hasn't been a weapon type like Esper before, and I feel like I did a good job of showing the kind of potential a 4-bar spinner has. Due to the short time frame I built Esper in, this iteration of the bot had several design flaws that I'm looking forward towards improving on. Needless to say, Esper will be back and better than ever. Now before I end the video, I actually have one more match to show you guys that doesn't include Esper. For the event, I also brought my Beetleweight robot Kill With Fire and I ended up fighting Crass Fest from Robert Run and Positively Hysterical from Tom Farkas in a Sportsman Exhibition match. Since it was an exhibition match just for fun, Kill With Fire would not be using its flamethrower, but Tom Farkas actually gave me the squeaky hammer from Boisterous Exuberance that I zip tied to Kill With Fire's weapon arm for the match. There's absolutely no strategy for this fight other than just mess around and have fun. Let's take a look at that rumble right now. Three, two, one. Oh, 
All right, so Robert. Oh, okay, that's good. You better unflip him. So Quaz can. <laughs> I can't even call this chaos. All right. Um. So Crash Fest has knocked over Positively Hysterical, but they have managed to self-right themselves. Kill It With Fire is driving around, effectively using that squeaker. And Crash Fest is just here causing problems and chaos and putting all their robots on the faces and, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Are you stuck in his, okay. So, these are all three pound robots. Pause, I believe, is four, five pounds because it has a non-normal um, locomotion. Oh yeah, please, go hit him, go ahead, yes, and there we go. Tom has won a match before by beating his opponent with a beater bar. Crash Fest pinning, kill it without fire over there. And here comes Robert to get underneath paws and flip it on his face one more time. But Tom can still walk as his servos are still engaging. 30 seconds left in this, um, not sure what you want to call it. Tom is half on his face. Oh goodness, this is great. Uh, <laughs> I believe a lot of these gentlemen will be at World Championships in two weeks. Robert is driving minibots for a few different robots. Uh, Kokoto is on Team WPI and will be running pit crew for Waddles. And I am sure Tom will be there in some capacity just so I can give him a hug. Thank you all for that lovely show. Your robots are fantastic. <laughs> Bring me so much joy. And that officially marks the end of my time at Maker Battle. I would just like to give a shout out to everyone who worked so hard to make the event run smoothly. Overall, I had an amazing time and I would love to come back in the future. Also, in the description of this video, you'll see links to the channels of some of the builders that I fought. You should give them a watch. As for me, I would just like to give you all another thank you for everyone who watches my videos and follows my robot fighting content. It really means a lot. Thank you all and I hope you have a wonderful day.